Uh, so, hello everyone. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, the optimization of the Quantum Espresso uh, program with GASPY and OMPFS. So let's give a little bit of background. So what is Quantum Espresso? Quantum Espresso is a program, well, in actual fact, it's a package of programs for the accurate calculation of the properties of materials. Uh, this package is, is fast and efficient. It's parallelized with MPI and OpenMP. Uh, it's written in Fortran 90 and, and it's freely available. So the, the license is a, is a GPL license, but you can download it from GitHub or GitLab or from the Quantum Espresso site uh, quite easily. So what are, the pro what are the performance, what do we know about the program in terms of performance? Well, well this, is, this is quite well known. Uh, we know there are two, let's say, bottlenecks in terms of scaling or optimization. And these two are the linear algebra component and the part regarding the fast Fourier transform. Now, linear algebra is very common in electronic structures calculations. Um, and what it means is that we need to manage large matrices, and this can take quite a long time. Also, the, the other main component is the fast Fourier transform. So in these sort of calculations, we very often have to um, transform one coordinate representation to another. And so we do this many times uh, in, the, in the calculation. Uh, since these kernels are so important, uh, Quantum Espresso provides two so-called mini apps, which allows us to test the linear algebra and fast Fourier transform uh, libraries. And in, uh, in uh, Quantum Espresso, these are called a laxlib and FFTxlib. What we're gonna do though is concentrate on the FFTxlib, that is the fast Fourier transform. So the reason for this is that the, for the linear algebra, this is mainly dependent upon how good your linear, linear algebra library is. And normally you link that in to, to the program and you, know, you don't have much control over it. Whereas for the FFT, we can control how it's used. So we're going to talk about in this presentation the FFT XLIP uh, mini app. And in particular, how we've used this in EPIC to try and optimize the application's performance. So let me just say, first of all, that we do link in an external FFT library. This might be from Intel MPL or FTW or something else. But how we use this library uh, is important for the application. Um, let's start off with a few sort of definitions. We're going to use various test cases for our program. Um, so Quantum Espresso is used for studying not only materials, but also various types of molecules. And the, these comes in various complexities. So, so water is, is uh, easier to simulate than uh, metals uh, and carbon nanotubes, for example. So this gives us different system sizes. So we normally try things first on something like water, and then uh, with more resources, we can use uh, something like carbon nanotubes. Um, okay, so don't be frightened here by, the, by the, uh, the program code. This is just representative to say what the main kernel of the FFTX uh, mini app is. So we have, uh, we have a loop, a Fortran loop here, and this is, this is the version of Quantum Espresso which uses the task groups. And actually, fact, we, think we haven't used task groups of uh, OpenMP because we haven't found uh, uh, a good performance um, usage for them. So here, um, what we would normally do is, is have a, a 3D FFT, so FFT in three dimensions, but since uh, parallel 3D FFT is a very expensive operation, uh, we do a sort of trick so that, may, that many applications also do. That is to uh, split the FFT in, uh, in uh, uh, the XY dimensions and in the Z directions. And in this way, we save some time in the parallelism. Um, but for Quantum Espresso, this trick actually introduces a bit of complexity. So in the original version, we had these uh, uh, MPI uh, auto all calls, but um, doing this sort of split in the 3D FFT 
adds another couple of MPI for dual calls here, here and here. In FFTXLib, uh, these MPI dual calls uh, represent about 30% of the total program time, with message sizes about from two to about 30K, depending on the parallelization and what system size you're dealing with. So let me just do a bit of background about MPI all to all. Um, this is uh, MPI collective call. And if you think of single data items which need to be um, communicated, this is equivalent to a matrix transpose. So um, if you're dealing with matrices, you can do a matrix transpose with an MPI or to all call here. Yeah. In terms of an MPI uh, communications which need to be done, uh, for each rank, you would do this sort of separation. Uh, but bear in mind, this has to be done for all the ranks, which I haven't shown here, which means there are a lot of communications involved. And this is why this is quite a heavy command. It's, it's quite expensive in terms of, uh, of the program time. OK, so this is what we want to point at. We want to, we decided and we think that one of our objectives was to focus on this MPI or or to all command in the FFT XLib mini app. And we wanted to do this with GASP. GASP is one of the technologies we're using in EPIC um, to replace, uh, under certain circumstances, uh, MPI, for example. So, what we decided to do was to write a GASP equivalent of MPI all to all. The reason being that in GASP, which is really designed for one sided communications, um, there aren't many collectives, and in fact, there is no equivalent. So this is what we did uh, with the Fraunhofer Institute to try and design uh, the equivalent of an MPI or tool. So as we can see, so let me just go through in a very, very rough way. The, the details are a bit more complex, but, but the basic idea is this. So for each uh, GASPI rank, we create uh, data segments. Uh, one where the data is uh, to be sent is stored and one where received data uh, is kept. Um, we transfer our data to be sent to, to our local segment. This is then copied to the appropriate place on the remote segments. And then we send a notification. You know, send a notification that this has been done. Uh, the rank which should receive this data then waits for this notification. And when this is finished, we can go ahead and copy to the local buffer and finish. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. There's a few more complicated details, but, but the general idea is this. So what happened? So when we tried this, we actually got quite excited. So let me try and explain why. And let's, ex let's explain this graph here. So we wrote a sort of a benchmark testing program which uh, compared MPI with the GASP MPI equivalent, GPI, if you like. So we did um, tests on four, eight, and 60 nodes of a local cluster. Here we have at Chenega or Galileo, uh, using four tasks per node. Um, in the solid lines here, this is the, the GASP version of MPI. Uh, as a function of message size and, and the wall time, uh, whereas the dash lines here are the GPI commands. And as you can see that whereas, you know, the, the results are more or less the same uh, up to about 1K here, after that, the, in, the MPI, which is the Intel MPI uh, version 18, really starts to give much poorer performance, i.e. so with the, the time is much greater compared to the GPI. And yeah, you know, this is a really nice result. And in fact, um, I haven't got a reference here, but this is this has been published and presented at conference. Good. Okay, so let's now try it in the Quantum Espresso program. Um, but how are we going to do this? So, the GASP uh, Auto All program uh, was written in C because uh, this was more convenient at the time. But we have an MPI Fortran program. Um, this is not trivial to go through all the lines of the Fortran code and replace with the, the equivalent in C. So we adopted this schema to make things a bit more, a bit, bit simpler. So the first thing we, we did was to write a Fortran uh, 90 uh, interface or a 
really, in actual fact, Fortran 2003 interface, which allows us to couple uh, C and Fortran programs more easily. This was then embedded into a Fortran PMPI. So MPI gives you the possibility to um, override the normal MPI commands with your old version. With your, with your version. So what we did, we um, uh, uh, overrode the normal MPI all to all to all to all command with our own version of GPI all to all. You can then compile this as as a shared library, and then all you have to do is link it in at uh, at runtime to your main program. Now th this this is great. I mean th this is a really useful technique because like this you don't have to touch the main program, uh, and in fact you can compare both versions, the MPI or the GPI. Uh, just by uh, loading or not loading uh, the shared library. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. The results, unfortunately, are not as we might have uh, wanted. So here, again, we're on the Chenenka Galileo machine. Uh, the blue are the GPI results, uh, the orange are the uh, Intel MPI uh, for four, eight, 12, and 16 nodes. And as we can see here, we're not really getting much benefit from the GPI. Uh, a little bit at, at four nodes, but not so much uh, for the Intel MPI. This, by the way, is using the water test case. So the water test case is in fact quite small. We're not quite sure what the reason for this is. Um, probably this is due to the fact that when you start increasing the number of nodes, the actual message size, which is fixed for a given problem size, actually decreases. And we, as we saw from the previous graph, we will like a message size, which is, is fairly high. We may get better results with the larger test cases, for example, um, and then we're working on this, but, but this, this we have to, to carry on working. Let's switch though to a, a different uh, EPIC um, programming uh, method, and this is called OMPS. Okay, I'll do a very, very brief, um, uh, background to this because um, uh, other people can do it better. But basically, the idea here is is that you uh, introduce tasks uh, to your program, but tasks which um, are based on the data coming into it. So in such a way that uh, a, da uh, a task uh, only executes when the input data are ready. And in this way, you can build uh, a dependency graph. So this task will start. Uh, and this task will only start when the input data are ready. Uh, in the program, you specify what the required input is for each task and what is the required output. Uh, and this is a very, very clever way of programming because you're deciding that your parallelism should be data-based rather than algorithmic-based. There are some similarities with the OPMP task-based programs, but, but there are also some, some significant differences as well. So how do we do this for FXTLib? Again, don't be worried about the, the, pro, the program code here. I'm not gonna go into it, um, but this is the sort of the loop we had before. With OMPS, that's all we have to do. Just put a few lines in saying that we want uh, each, uh, each part of this kernel here runs a task and telling what the, the input and output data should be so that each task can run. It's, it's fairly simple. I mean, this is just a few lines of code. Um, so we did some tests on this. Uh, for, for EP, how we run a number of systems. Um, we decided to run these particular tests on the Carolina supercomputer, which is uh, based at the IT for Innovations Computer Center in Ostava in the Czech Republic. And this is a computer with a total peak of 15.7 petaflops. Uh, the useful thing here is that OMPS is already installed. So um, this was already part of the, of the system there. Uh, the nodes on Carolina are um, uh, AMD um, processors, each one with 64 cores and 256 gigabytes per node. <coughs> okay, so what tests did I do on Carolina? I chose the water test case. And I ran with uh, MPI, 128 tasks per node. I also did the mixed uh, hybrid MPI plus OpenMP. So in this case, since we have um, 
128 possible tasks on each node. <coughs> this is equivalent to 32 tasks plus four threads OpenMP, or I ran it under OMPS for OMP threads. And the performance, as before, is measured as a wall time, as a function of the, of the nodes we're using. Uh, in some cases, I use half a node, which means one socket of, of a node. And these are the results I get. So here, as I said, we are comparing uh, in blue uh, the hybrid MPI plus OpenMP, orange is MPI plus OMPS, and green uh, is pure MPI. For the half on one node, uh, I couldn't get any results for the OpenMPS uh, for the ONS because of memory uh, reasons. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have any data for that. But from two nodes and upwards, uh, I was able to run all three program models on these nodes. And as you can see here, the results are, are really very interesting. So the, the slowest performances are those for MPI. Uh, OpenMP, or the mixed MPI plus OpenMP, gives us uh, a nice performance increase. And this is what we knew anyway from, from Quantum Espresso. So Quantum Espresso is very often run in the hybrid uh, MPI OpenMP. And but even better with the OMPs, uh, we, we get a, an increase in performance. Not much of an increase in performance as we increase the number of nodes, probably because we're already at the scaling limit for this uh, system here. But hopefully when we use larger systems, we're able to show the, uh, uh, you know, a nice increase uh, or decrease in wall time as we advance up uh, this axis here. Uh, so that's great, that's pretty good. So these are, these are the results so far. So, so we haven't finished yet. This, this really is work in progress. We, we need to try with the larger inputs and it would be useful also to try on different architectures. The, the Gatsby results are not as good as we would like, uh, at least in this case, but we may have just been unlucky with, with, the, with the test case here, where we need to try, uh, try a bit further. The MPI plus OMPS uh, program method seems to work really nicely here. I mean, we're getting a speed up of a factor of three with that, uh, respect to MPI and a factor of two for the, for the hybrid. And this, this is really nice. And uh, we can, um, we need to uh, try further with this. Uh, we, we can't use it for very low core count, but that's not what we're aiming for anyway. So, I mean, we're, we're aiming for, you know, um, exascale systems, in which case uh, we're aiming for the high core. Okay, so this is where I finish. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>